Hi, my name is John. Thank you for joining me. I'm fresh out of the dentist chair and this quadrant of my face is, well, it's completely numb and it's lunchtime and I'm hungry. And so I stopped and I picked up this soup, but um, the chunks in it are like the same texture as my cheek, which is disconcerting. Well, Joshua Stevens heard this news and he suggested I make a map video in my current state of numbness. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, his face is weird and he sounds weird. But how do you explain that hair? You might be asking. It's because I was wearing this beanie. It's November. I'm working on a drought app and I'm making the base map for this drought app. And the problem with the regular imagery as a base map for this, even though it's awesome and I love it and I've had a hand in designing it, there's a little bit too much contrast and variability. Some places are very light and some places are pretty dark and so what I would like to do is kind of even out the tones of this imagery base map so that when I lay data on top of it and give that drought layer a blend mode it's kind of consistent but still gives me a little bit of context so our world naturally is pretty high contrast we have big swaths of highly reflective arid areas and deep dark areas of forest you can really get a sense of this if I remove all the color and just show a black and white picture of the earth and while this is reality it doesn't necessarily make the best backdrop for a thematic map. So I'm going to create a custom base map that's suitable for thematic mapping. I'll open the base map and imagery is my selection. And with this world imagery layer selected, I can go into the effects and activate brightness and contrast. And I'm going to go the other way. Thanks. Brightness, let's get this back down to normal, like uh, 110. And then contrast, I'm going to bring it down to 38 which looks terrible, but that's okay. We're not done yet. Turn this off. And now we need to bring back in some of our lost color. So I'll go to saturate and turn this way up to 185. And now I have something that's pretty intriguing looking, but not perfect. Next, I would like to darken these water areas so that the land has more of the focus. Now I'll add a layer from Living Atlas called bathymetry dark and I don't want this to be quite as purpley as it is by default so I'll do this hue rotate and I'll just swing the color wheel around to I don't know something like this 289 nice and dark kind of a slate color but it's too dark and so I'm gonna make it semi-transparent the properties I'll make it like 30% transparent. This is looking better. And now I would like to hack in a sort of a coastal effect. And this is really sneaky. Let me zoom in on a some coastline. I'll go back to the effects and I'm going to activate a drop shadow. And I'll choose like a, a nice tannish color, medium tan. And I'll give it a width of one and an offset of one and one. And now I have this little coastal artifact on the top left corner of all my land areas. Isn't that neat? And in reducing the contrast of my land cover, I have however lost the terrain of these mountainous areas and I want to bring that back. So once again in Living Atlas, I will search for Hillshade Dark. And it's a global tiled layer, covers the whole world at all scales of dark hillshade. Beautiful. I'll go to the properties and because I want to bake these tones into the underlying map, I'll give it a blend mode, of soft light. I'll take a look at these layers that I have in my base map. And this is before the hill shade and this is after the hill shade. I've returned the sense of texture and terrain, but I'd like it to have more of an earth tone. So I'll go into the effects and I'll turn on sepia. Sepia gives it like this nice brown vintage wash before sepia hillshade, after sepia hillshade. And because I want this layer to render on top of any layers that I put in here in the future, the thematic layers, I'll drag it into the reference area. So now if I put in countries or drought areas, the hillshade will render on top of those thematic layers. And at this point, you could be done with your base map. It's a nice low contrast world imagery map. But I would like to add some reference data like borders. So I'm going to click add and I'll choose Living Atlas and I'll choose ArcGIS Online this time. This item is not in Living Atlas. And I'm going to search for Human Geography Dry. Human Geography Detail Dry is a layer that I've customized to remove any water because I already have water here and I don't want to ruin that. 
So I'll add this, and it's just the borders, no rivers and lakes and oceans. And I'll give this a blend mode of screen because I only want the lightness to show and screen removes all darkness. And it's a little abrupt. And so I'll just push this down to 50% transparent. It's just a reference. And I'll take a look at my layers and I'll add this as a reference layer so it shows up on top of any data that I add to this map. And lastly, I'd like to add some labels just so we know what we're looking at. Let's move somewhere else uh, over here. I'll add, this time I am going into Living Atlas and I'll search for a human geography dark label. And there they are. And once again, I'd like to keep the lightness and not the darkness, so I'll do a blend mode of lighten. That just looks a little bit more pleasant to me. And I'll push this transparency down to like 27. And now we have a global base map with imagery, which is useful for context, but it doesn't have that variable brightness behind it that might change how you interpret thematic data sitting on top. Thank you for watching my video. Most of this numbing is starting to wear off having recorded and edited this video and I'm feeling great.